All right, this is the second time shooting this video. Uh, the first time it apparently stopped recording and I had done all the work, mostly. Luckily I noticed at the very end. So I've put this all back together the way it originally was. Um, in the process, this little thing broke. Um, I'll fix that at another date, uh, but a lot of times people just take it off. Um, it's, it's just a dust cover, it's not really going to hurt anything, uh, but yeah. Um, it looked like it was already broken, so... Um, anyway, the problem I'm having with this thing is I bought this 4-track uh, recorder, it's a Fostex X12. It's the one that I had circuit bent in a previous video, well, it's, a, it's the same brand as one I had circuit bent, and I plan on doing it to this one as well, and adding some other things. Unfortunately, this has a problem where it'll play regular tapes. Yeah, plays them just fine. But when I put a endless cassette tape through it, this will play. And it gets stuck like that, and then it doesn't play any longer. So. I did a lot of research trying to figure out what was wrong, and in the end I spoke to Amulets online and he told me that um, you have to be really careful about the splice points on these endless tapes, and that the splice has to be really small, as small as you can get it without the tape you know, coming apart. Uh, so I went ahead and made sure that that was done. You can't see it on the video, but the splice is really, really small, and yet it's still getting caught between the pinch roller and the thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it off, and I'm going to um, take it apart and then we're going to replace the pinch roller and we're going to replace the belts. So uh, there's a German company online that I bought the new belts and a new pinch roller from. The pinch roller is going to be the most difficult part to get out but we're going to get it done. Cool, alright, so the way this comes apart, real simple, it's just five screws. Normally I'm advocating for um, keeping all your screws safe so that you know where they're at, but this is just going to be a few screws, so it's not going to be a big deal. Alright, this comes up, um, well, there's a little cassette um, uh, spring right there, and you know, just be careful to, when you're putting it back on and, and stuff not to catch that and bend it. Anyway, this comes up and then it folds back because there's some ribbons right here. Um, the easiest way to remove the belts is to, well, there's two belts that are the same size. This belt is just for the counter. All that does is run the counter. You don't even have to have that on there, I don't believe. The other belt on the bottom is this size and then you have a big fat belt. Uh, I don't even know if I'm in frame. So you have two belts, like I said, this belt and then one on the bottom are the same size. I can tell right now that this one feels really, really loose. And like I said, I've already removed all of these. Um, so I know that they're not too bad. Um, you know? So I, I think the problem is probably the pinch roller because when I'm looking at it closely, it seems kind of uh, rounded and oval and that's not good. It makes the tape probably ride up and down the pinch roller and then it makes it get caught much easier. Uh, so just like the, the bottom cover, there's five screws to remove the, um, the cassette player. I want you to take particular note of there's two grounds, one, two, so you want to make sure you put those back um, And once those five screws are out, this just lifts right up. There's two uh, harnesses connected here, so just be careful to not, you know, yank it. You're gonna turn it this way. And as we can see, we have the two belts. Um, they come off real easy. You're just gonna go like that, and voila. And um, I don't know why I say voila. I'm not French. And this one, and you can see that one of them is pretty oval and loose. The other one seems okay. I don't think this thing was in too bad a shape as far as the belts are concerned. Um, but yeah. Alright, so one thing to mention about these belts is there is a little 
uh, groove down in here that this lower belt is going to go on. Probably the best way to do it is get it on there first, like so. There. Okay, we're on the groove. Spin it just to make sure it's uh, not kinked or anything. And make sure you put the correct belt on. All right, now we have this guy. And he just slips right over. And fits on there. We good? All right, there's. On these, there's two little, um, oh, I just almost knocked this belt off. Uh, there's two, there's a little divot uh, or post that these slide onto. Again, be mindful of your ground. Okay, um, we're going to want to put on this other one as well for the counter. So I like to pinch it like this and get a little loop and then I can get it under there and around. There's a little groove that I'll show you in just a second. There's, there's a little groove on this guy and there's a little groove on the white one here. And you just want to make sure you get it around that. Cool. Now we're going to fix the pinch roller. And we're, before we uh, attach everything, we're going to go ahead and um, leave it all connected like this are disconnected so that we can get to this uh, pinch roller. I already cleaned this pinch roller, um, tried to at least with uh, rubber restore and everything and to get it running and it um, didn't give me the results I wanted. It worked a little bit better but it was still as you could tell having that problem so we're gonna get that fixed. Uh, Alright so now we're gonna replace this and let's do that. Okay we're back with this I'm um, going to replace this pinch roller and uh, they're all different in every machine so I did a little bit of research to make sure I knew what I was doing before I showed you. Um, and in the process I went ahead and fixed the broken uh, cover. It's a little bit dirty, I just need to clean it. Um, but the way I did that was literally it, um, it had snapped right here and I went ahead and super glued it with some really good super glue and let it sit for a day um, and then I did it a couple of times and this little thing, uh, metal thing acts as a uh, it acts as a um, as a spring sort of and so I just you know remove that, fix this, put it in there carefully and then uh, put the spring back on so if you ever want to fix that that's how you do it and it works now just kind of spring loaded which is great um, it kind of looks cool without it I think actually so it's not that big of a deal but anyway I wanted to I wanted to fix it all right um, so for the make sure my videos going yep all right <clears throat> so to get the pinch roller working um, there's a spring it's going to be hard to see on this video, and I'm really sorry about that, but just trust me when I explain to you. If you get in there with like a little um, a little magnifying glass like I have here, you're going to be able to see with your, with your own eyes that there is in fact a spring. And the spring is right here, and it goes underneath uh, into a little groove of the pinch roller which allows the, when you press play, it uses the spring tension to push the um, capistan roller against the capstan. Pretty cool, right? I believe the word capstan comes from uh, naval um, capstans where you, I think those are the things that you tie ropes to when you um, moor a ship or whatever they call it. I, you know, I don't know. I'm not, I wasn't in the Navy or anything like that, but uh, I believe that's where the word capstan comes from. If 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 you know and I'm wrong, then I, I guess I could have Google searched it. But if you know, then go ahead and say in the comments below, and uh, let me know. You know, history's cool. All right. So what we do to remove 
the pinch roller is we have to remove this arm. And the way I found to do it is you're going to you're going to take the spring and you're going to push it down underneath and bring it out from the groove that's on the um like I said there's a little groove in there where the uh where the spring is and you simply just have to push it down and out. And you don't want to bend the spring or anything, so just be real careful. Okay, I found it's easier to just use the needle nose pliers uh, and get the spring out from underneath there like that. And now this is free. And there's a little plastic piece. There's a little plastic piece that connects the post uh, and keeps the the capistan roller from uh, arm from lifting up, so you have to sort of uh, push it past the capstan and lift until it comes off. Uh, push it past the capstan and lift until it comes off. And you can see on this piece that there is a little, um, that there's a little, you can see how the divot is um, that keeps it on there. Uh, I don't know why I keep saying divot, I don't know what to call this, you know, a little, uh, I think a divot is a term in uh, golf. But this little groove right here is, keeps a plastic, a uh, little plastic arm keeps it on there and so you have to kind of move it past. Anyway, uh, so this is the spring right here. And another thing that could have been wrong with this is maybe the spring tension wasn't strong enough so we could either replace this spring or we could actually just uh, probably um, you know bend it a little bit so this so the tension's a little bit stronger. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then that's gonna allow it to push the capstan roller harder against the capstan. And so the capstan roller has, when you buy the replacement kit, or at least the one that I bought, it has a capstan with the plastic insert, but it does not have, um, it does not have the little post. So you want to get that out and you want to um, be very careful to preserve that and keep it. I think if you had a proper uh, push tool, you could probably push this out. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grip right here, not on the other side of the, the pin, and then I'm going to use this part, and you see, and I'm going to push the pin until it uh, pushes through like that, like that, and then I'm going to use something like this. Be careful not to poke your hand. I think there's probably a proper tool for this. Um, and again, if you know of the proper tool to do this with, I think it's just like a, a, a die or whatever they call it, a tap die, a die. Um, there we go. So I got it out, and now it just simply pulls out like that. And you have a little pin, and the capstan roller comes right off. Um, now we're going to put this back in there. Um, you might want to oil this. I'm not going to because I think it's uh, pretty, pretty uh, smooth. But it may be behoove you to oil it. Um, oh, well, that's great. There we go. All right. So you know this is sort of self-explanatory. Um, the pin just slips right in there. Uh, put it through the capstan roller and then you pretty much just kind of click it into place in the same way 
So just sort of make sure that you push it on there. Well, that was pretty easy. All right. So as you can see, I've got it on there. And now we, this is the part where the spring goes. As you can see, there's a little um, groove that the spring right here fits into. So we're gonna wanna be mindful of the way this goes on. And remember that this has a little groove. So when you put this back on, it goes uh, on like this. And push it a little bit. Yeah, I can feel that this cap center roller is much bigger than the other one. The other one was pretty worn down. So let me get this on here. There. All right, cool. And then we're going to do what we did before. And we're going to push this spring just underneath there. Takes just a second. There we go. Awesome. And we're good. Um, oh, as you can see probably from the previous video, uh, I had left these screws unscrewed, but I went ahead and screwed those back in um, when I did this, uh, when I fixed the, lip, the lid, because I realized I didn't need to have this off in order to remove the capstan roller when I investigated exactly how to do it. We're all done. We've replaced the belts and we've replaced the capstan roller, and now we're going to test it out. But just to recap before I put it back together, uh, I just want you to know that the belt here is the same size as one of the belts on the underneath and you'll also have the big fat belt. You'll put those on um, and then you'll be mindful of the two grounds here and you'll go ahead and make sure that those are screwed back on. And then the way we remove the capstan roller is the, po the plastic post here has a little plastic uh, uh, little uh, arm that sticks off. And you have to you have to um, take the spring out from the the valley groove that's inside of this, and then you have to turn the capstan arm so that you can then lift up the capstan arm to access the capstan roller. And then we, as you saw, we pushed the pin out and replaced it. And now we're going to test to see if it works. Um, and of course, the way this goes back together is quite simple. It's, uh, I just want to straighten this belt out. It's, I don't think it really matters, but I just want to. Um, all right, and, and you know, again, there's these five screws to put, you know, to reattach this arm. You may want to clean this out while you're in there. You want to make sure never to use rubbing alcohol on the rubber pieces. Uh, but instead you would use rubber restorer on here and then you would use head cleaner on these uh, heads right here. Uh, this is the erase head and this is the play head. Um, I believe the play head also serves as the record head and I think the erase head just simply erases. In a future video I'm going to show you how to attach a kill switch to the erase head which is quite simple. You'll notice the colors going to the erase head and then those colors correspond to, um, you know, the playhead goes uh, here to this little white thing and then the erase head goes here and what you would do, there's also a respective ground for each one, so what you would do is uh, there's a cable for each track going to the erase head, so you would need a four pole switch, uh, which I have here, and I spoke to Scott Campbell who's an amazing musician and DIYer um, on YouTube and on Instagram. He also has a company, I'm going to mangle the name because I don't do French very well, uh, called Ond Magnetique. Um, Ond Magne I, anyway, you know, look him up. He's awesome. He's really awesome. And I asked him really quickly. I, I suspected, you know, the, how to do a switch, but he was kind enough to remind me to get a, a four pole switch and you would attach uh, you don't have to worry about the grounds, you're going to have to cut the wires for each track going to the erase head and then you'll attach them to the independent poles here and then yeah, so we're going to do that in the next video. And in the next video we're also going to separate the four tracks from the two outputs and we're going to put four actual 
um, mini jacks coming out of this thing so that we can send it to a mixer as four independent tracks, which could be quite fun. Um, all right, yeah. And the way this goes back together is, uh, as you recall, quite simple. We didn't remove these ribbon cables, um, so that's cool. We have to be mindful of this piece here. It's a little um, sort of spring that holds the tape in there. And, um, and then this just goes back on like so. And I won't say voila because I don't know why I keep saying that. I don't actually use that in real life. I just, for some reason on the video, it's, it's weird, you kind of become a different person sometimes when you're, when you're recording. Okay, we're back. I uh, took it back apart really quickly just because I noticed that the spring, I didn't put it fully into the little valley that it goes into for the capstan arm. Um, but before I put it back together, I just wanted to make sure I've done everything right and I want to test it out. So there's a really easy way to do that. This is powered on. As you can see, it's always running. Uh, don't, don't touch around in here, uh, but you can just, these always fit right on here like this. And then um, I've got a zoom connected to this so we can hear. Um, I also wanted you to be able to see it working. It's kind of neat to see how the uh, playhead and the um, erase head engage, where they engage, how the cap stand fits inside of this little divot, and then, yeah. I might mention that the Fostex manual says that you're supposed to use these uh, high definition cassettes or whatever um, as well. So it might, you know, might be a problem using these tape loops with the uh, regular cassettes. I don't know, but we're gonna find out. So. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> it was the, uh, it was definitely the spring and the capstan roller. Um, yeah, I think, well, it might have been a combo. It might have just been the spring not being uh, tight enough, but I went ahead and tightened that as well by bending it a little bit, and then I put the new capstan roller on there, and it seems to work great now. I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, here, let's try out another one. This one has a couple of splices in it because I took a, a several different pieces of tape and I spliced it several areas to kind of get like a weird, you know, random effect. Uh, you know, it's nice to see what happens. So, and I wanted some extra crinkles in it, so. I also crinkled it by hand. Um, you can really see how crinkled this tape is. So I wanted to test it in here. And it's working perfectly. So there you go. So the problem with this was the capstan roller and the possibly the spring as well. I should have probably tried to just tension the spring before I put the new roller on, but I could already tell by putting the new roller on. You, you might not be able to see, oh, that's awesome. You might not be able to see in the video, but uh, yeah, be real careful while this is powered on. Sticking stuff in there. It's like operation. Um, but you can see this capstan roller is like, it's it's not a straight barrel anymore, it's kind of curved like that. And it's really worn down. Uh, luckily it's not cracked or anything, but it's very, it's very curved uh, compared to this one, which is nice and flat, and it seems to have a bigger diameter. So I, I definitely think it was the, the roller. But that's how you replace the capstan roller on this, and um, 
get yourself a working cassette. I'm pretty stoked. I really love these Fostex X12s, uh, even more so than the Tascams, um, just because these have the motor you need to do your own custom pitch control, which I'll be doing in this. And also, I'll be separating the four tracks out to their own little respective track outputs. Um, and then I'm also going to be installing a kill switch for the record head so that you don't have to put masking tape over it. It'll just be a real easy thing. But uh, there you go. I hope this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section below. Um, if you like the video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and also a subscribe. And make sure you hit the little bell for notifications. You may not know it, but if you hit subscribe, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get uh, notifications of my new videos. Uh, future videos are going to be about what I just said, which is going to be more Fostex work. I'm making a digital tape delay. Uh, I'll be showing you how to do that from scratch, even building the PCB board. And then I'm going to um, also build a synthesizer. A small. I'm currently building a small cigar box synth. Um, sort of in the vein of like, look mum, no computer, but I'm gonna make it uh, much smaller than he's making, and uh, something you can make DIY in a little cigar box synth that has a couple LFOs, a filter, and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, and also I have a, a Patreon that I started. I'm not trying to get a lot of money from this, uh, something I just do for fun, but if you don't know, Patreon would really help me by sending you know, whatever you want to donate uh, per month, it will get you uh, sample packs, it will get you special videos, and it will also help support the channel and keep it ad free, which is something I'd like to try to do is keep it on YouTube without ads. Uh, I'm not trying to monetize on YouTube, but instead just use community support so that I can buy better and better gear and I can experiment more and make videos for you. Um, you know, I'd like to buy better uh, camera gear and stuff like that eventually as the channel grows and just con continually improve the channel so that it can be as high quality as possible and I can get some really good close-ups of things for you. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to talking about the next project. Bye.